Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to the Summer of Carnage right here in the Venom vlog. And today we're going to talk about Amazing Spider-Man 31, which is a tie-in to Absolute Carnage. Um, I will give out the digital code here in a second, but first I just want to say, um, you know, I'm sorry I'm behind on everything. Uh, last week I didn't have any money for comics. This week was really no different. I was able to spare maybe like 20 bucks uh, of my budget to get comics this week. And all $20 went to Absolute Carnage tie-ins. Like the main book issue four came out and then all the tie-ins came out. And it's really frustrating on weeks like that because I really do want to try other comics i don't want to just you know follow this and read this and uh and so like when it eats up my whole budget for the week it's a little frustrating because i'm like oh, come on man like like i i want to follow the story and i want to you know review this stuff you know for everyone and everything but uh when i have a budget of 20 bucks a week for comics or 25 sometimes i can go up to 25 um but uh this week i was like yeah i can't budget like I, I wish i could only go to 10 this week but i went the extra 10 just to make sure i got all the absolute carnage tie-ins so that's a little frustrating so it does affect my rating because now i'm like is this worth the money i spent on it even more so than we, previous weeks like a couple weeks ago we had one we had immortal hulk come out and i was like oh thank goodness that was so easy on my wallet and last week it was just these two i got amazing spider-man 31 and miles morales number three at la comic-con and so i was like all right that's cool you know because i had uh, you know a few extra bucks at that point um you know because i got paid that day but i had to you know catch up on bills of course i spent like 120 bucks at the con itself on like different things um so i made sure i got my comics in there too because i was like if i don't then i can't squeeze these two issues into my budget for this week of comics uh so yeah it's like uh, yeah so besides that you know obviously i went to doctors yesterday some of you saw on social media and i had some stressful news there so it's been a week for sure and i worked all weekend and stuff so yeah i'm just I'm kind of strung out right now and I was like let's just and last night I was like let's just sit down and read some comics that I got last week and then this morning I was like all right let's pick up our comics and then catch up and so now that I've read and then fully ingested all this absolute carnage stuff I'm ready to talk about it but before we do because we're going to probably get into some mild spoilers here with Amazing Spider-Man 31 uh, even though there's really not much to spoil I would say if you're reading absolute carnage and you you know need to have every chapter of the story I would say this one you could probably skip I hate to say that because it's written pretty well by Nick Spencer but it mainly ties into his spider-man run it does you know have events that take place during the current you know uh carnage absolute carnage event but mostly it, it kind of just continues what he's been doing on the run and kind of trying to give a more of a peek behind the curtain of who kindred really is this new character he created so it's uh, on that level i would say i'm not probably going to spoil much for you unless you're reading the nick spencer run but either way before we get into spoilers boom there's the digital code first person who gets it you know let me know in the comments below and give me your review of this comic down below after you read it and we'll continue our conversation down there and obviously anyone out there who is trying to avoid spoilers you know avoid the comment section until you read the book uh, i'll give away some minor ones but again none of them are spoilers for the main absolute carnage series they're for Nick Spencer's run so if you don't want any I'd say walk away now so that's why I feel a little bit better about maybe spoiling some of these things but not much happens in this issue to be honest with you it's mainly like a dialogue heavy issue uh it does show a lot of flashbacks to peter parker's earlier life when he was friends with harry and when harry was you know in the hospital and people were like hey is harry on drugs or again or what's going on with him and peter you know can't really explain the whole you know norman osborne harry osborne you know goblin thing and stuff so he's kind of like uh yeah i think i guess and, and it's breaking peter's heart seeing his friend like this so when he tries to go visit him you know norman shows up he's like get out of my house and he's like take gwen and Mary Jane with you like get out of here or whatever and uh and there's all this stuff going on and then they start to show a little bit more of that relationship between Harry and Norman too once you know the friends are gone and stuff so it's it's a neat exploration of that time period obviously they, obviously that's going to be like very integral to who Kindred is because Kindred seems to remember a lot of these events so this book continues just like the last issue basically what Nick Spencer did is he took this like five minute fight with Spider-Man and Norman Osborn slash Cletus and he stretched it out over two issues and just filled it with a bunch of flashbacks to give more hints to add to who Kindred might be and uh, that's interesting I mean it's a it's but it's also makes this feel like less of a vital tie-in and that's the only downside is when I was reading this I was like these are two good issues of Amazing Spider-Man but are they must read for Absolute Carnage I don't really think so because this takes place surprisingly after absolute carnage 4 um so in absolute carnage 4 we'll talk about that coming up but it's you know like the hulk and and uh or venom hulk or whatever it's called is fighting you know uh the cletus cassidy like the dark version of, of carnage and uh, and while that's happening you know eddie brock decides to go try to be the hero and give a hero moment and he tells peter or spider-man to watch the two boys so that's what's happening in this one is it's peter watching the two boys and uh, cletus showing up or cletus slash norman showing up to fight him and that happens at the end of issue four 
and that's where issue 30 of this began. So we were actually jumping ahead a full issue. I thought that was going to happen like after issue three, but it looks like it happens after issue four as far as, you know, in order goes. So yeah, if you're reading the books, read Absolute Carnage one or four and then read Amazing Spider-Man 30 and 31. But it'll still flash back to two weeks ago when Kindred visited Ravencroft and like, you know, talked to Norman Osborn, even though Norman wasn't responsive. But we see a little bit more of that in this issue where, um, you know, Norman at the end of the last issue, issue uh, 30 of Amazing Spider-Man, he's standing over, you know, Spider-Man getting ready to kill him. And he's so happy about, he's like, I'm finally going to be the one to kill him. And Kindred even said in the last issue, like, you're not going to kill him on that day. You're going to become yourself again before you battle, you know, Peter Parker proper and get to a point where you might, you know, where, where this all ends or whatever. So again, hinting that maybe Kindred can maybe see the future or knows what the future is or what the future holds or one version of the future holds. We don't know. So, um, so Kindred kind of drops that knowledge on Norman in this book. And then when, uh, you know, as Kindred's walking away, Kindred comes back and, you know, puts like a worm inside Norman's ear and like an actual worm, not like, you know, you know, like not like a metaphorical, uh, you know, whispering in his ear or something. He actually drops a, like a centipede thing into his ear and it stays inside his brain until this moment where he's about to kill Peter. And then the worm comes, you know, like, like attacks his brain and prevents him from doing it. And he's like, no, it's not fair. I had him. I had him. Like, why did you do that to me? And it cuts back to Ravencroft two weeks ago when Kindred did it. But then when Kindred did that, it also awakened, um, you know, the Cletus uh, side to speak to Kindred. So Cletus is like, hey, I'm not Norman Osborn. He's like doing a Southern accent and stuff. And he's like, I'm not Norman Osborn, but he's in here and he wants me to tell you something. And then, you know, uh, Cletus proceeds to basically hint at or say without saying who it is but it hints at that you know norman even deep down inside the subconscious knows who kindred is and is happy that uh, of the identity of kindred because that means he did somehow leave a legacy and so again you're like oh wow okay so who, who is kindred uh someone tied to norman osborne to where norman osborne feels like he can take responsibility for their existence um so again more hints at who kindred is so that's like the only kind of spoilery thing there uh but that's it we still don't know who kindred is we just know that norman osborne now knows who it is and then uh, you know nick spencer puts in kind of that cliche moment where peter's down and he's like screaming at himself get up get up you know get up and do something but he does it a little in you know kind of an interesting way here even though we've seen this done before too but it's Peter kind of connecting it to Gwen because obviously all these memories with Kindred, uh, you know, battling Kindred and stuff and, and inter, you know, interacting with Kindred has awakened these old memories and then seeing Norman and stuff. It's like, so he's remembering those times just like Kindred and Norman are remembering these times. And so uh, he thinks about the moment of Gwen where he couldn't, uh, you know, save her and, you know, he was too weak to save her. And then I think even, I mean, he, they should have thrown in a little Uncle Ben moment here too, but I guess you don't really need that. I guess that's always implied with, with Spider-Man. But the kids are in danger now because Cletus Norman has turned and says, all right, if I can't kill Spider-Man, I'll just do what I always do. I'll kill those he loves or he's trying to protect. And so, you know, Carnage goes and does like a here's Johnny moment, cuts in the door and is getting ready to kill the kids. And then Peter, you know, gets up and fights back. And so, uh, yeah, it's pretty fun because some cool moments in here, um, but ultimately it just feels like, you know, Nick Spencer was like, hey, I got to keep this, uh, you know, kindred story going line, you know, going on and the storyline going on. Uh, but I also am going to have some readers from Absolute Carnage coming in. So I want to intrigue them. So it felt more like him trying to hook people who aren't reading his book into his book, which is great. You know, obviously that's his job to do that. Um, and to use a, a crossover to do that is smart on a business level for sure. But I would say if you are reading Absolute Carnage and you, you know, you want to know which titles to skip that aren't vital, I would say this is kind of one of them because obviously we know Peter Parker is going to protect the kids and Donnie Cates will probably do something in Absolute Carnage 5 that kind of, you know, sums this up where on one panel he'll probably just punch Norman and knock him out. Whereas this was like two issues stretching out that fight and then putting in flashbacks uh, so you kind of understand maybe who Kindred might be um, but also understand the, the long relationship and history between Norman and Peter. Um, it's done really well but I would say still it's it's not vital uh, unless you just want to see a couple extra pages of uh, them two punching each other uh, that's all really this provides as far as absolute carnage tie-in so uh, you let me know what you think uh, you know I like I said I would say this book is still maybe like a three and a half out of five uh, but as far as a vital absolute carnage uh, tie-in I would say it's not that you could skip this and not miss a beat I feel like in absolute carnage uh, but maybe you guys disagree with me and if so let me know down in the comments below uh, but if you like this book or if you didn't like this book I'd love to hear your thoughts down below and we 
get into more spoiler stuff down there. But again, not a lot of spoilers in this issue, I felt, uh, except for stuff that ties into Nick Spencer's run. But even then, was like very vague. It's like, oh, we know Norman knows who Kindred is. That's the big kind of reveal in this. And that's it. And that's all we're going to get. And we're going to also maybe get Norman. He's going to get his control of his body back at some point. I was hoping it would happen either in this issue or in Absolute Carnage 4, so I was a little bummed out about that, but who knows, maybe we'll see something in Absolute Carnage 5. So that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. As always, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff, and as always, I'll see you guys in the future. Peace.